Hey everybody, welcome to Faith with Katie. I'm Katie Souza. We are broadcasting right now to the nations, literally live from KT Studios, out to all of Africa, out to Ireland, the UK, and across the United States of America. It's awesome what technology can do, and we want to thank Faith Television Network for broadcasting today's program. Okay, look, you're on your TV. That's terrific. Now get on your device. Pull out your iPad. Pull out your phone. Pull out your computer and start getting online. My Faith TV. Go to that page. Go to my page on Facebook, Katie Souza. Go to YouTube and get on there so I can see where you're watching from. Chat in. Tell me where you're at right now in the earth. I've already got people online. We got people on from South Africa. Welcome to you. People are watching and tuning in from Nigeria. Thanks coming. Uh, thank you to, for coming on to the broadcast today. We've got also people from all over the United States. It looks like Pennsylvania is online. Texas online and also Florida we've got people from everywhere tuning in and you know what I've noticed there's a lot of people welcome Australia and New Zealand you guys are becoming very consistent in watching the broadcast so thanks for joining us we're gonna go right now to our selfie miracle testimony this woman was suffering uh, suffering from migraines and pressure in the head and then boom she got deliverance in the meeting and she was completely free. Let's watch her testimony now. Hi, my name is Robin Chan and today pray, Katie prayed against the Python spirit and we did the prayers and prior to the prayers, I was I have been dealing with high blood pressure and tonight I felt like a, a vice grip was around my head causing extreme pressure and um, after she prayed and we prayed the prayers then the pressure suddenly went away and normally there's things I can do in the natural uh, supplements or different things take a nap or whatever to make the blood pressure go down but it doesn't ever normally just shoom, you know disappear suddenly so I believe I've been healed by the stripes of Jesus and by deliverance from a python spirit. <laughs> so that's my testimony. So awesome. We see so many incredible miracles in our meetings. That's why if you ever get a chance to go online, find out where we're going to be next. That way you can come in person, feel the presence of the Lord and get deliverance, get healing and get all kinds of uh, touches from the Lord in every area that you need it. Look, if you've ever had a miracle in one of our meetings or while you listen to one of our products or read one of the books, please do a selfie miracle testimony video. I need you to do those, okay guys? I need you to send them in. I, I, I see people all over the country. I go to a meeting, they run up to me and go, hey, you know, I was in your meeting in, in this and this place and I got a total miracle. Well, all you people that did that, I need you to now do a video for me. Do a two minute testimony video about what your illness was, how it affected you, what the doctor said about it, and what happened in the meeting. Because when you share your testimony, people get faith to get their breakthrough. And I know you can remember how you felt when you were sick and you needed your breakthrough. Well, when you share how you got a miracle, the people that are struggling the same way you did, they need to see that testimony. They need to get that miracle in their ears, in their eyes, so that they can have the breakthrough too. So send it to selfies at katiesouza.com. That's selfies at katiesouza.com. And thanks for bringing your submission in. Okay, today's guest, he's back. One of our show's favorite guests, it's Dr. Kenan Bridges. Dr. Bridges, welcome back. I'm excited. Thanks for having me again. I'm telling you, the first show we did on Faith with Katie was yes. a huge success. Yes. Thousands and thousands of, of, of views online, yeah. not to mention the people watching at home on their yeah. televisions. Then you and I did a healing 
yeah. a, a healing school together. And it's just gone crazy. It's blown up. Yeah. And in fact, I want to invite people, if you did not see our healing school live, it is in uh, the archives in our website. Just go to katiesouza.com. And I think it's healing school archive, right, at uh, underneath promos or underneath um products. Mm. So go to that page and look for the Healing School Archive with Dr. Keenan. It was powerful. Yeah. So many yeah. people got touched. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Now we're back today and yeah. wow, we were just like in the green room totally unpacking something. Yeah. Then you know people hear you mention this and they think, "Oh, you know, I've heard this message before." Oh no, this is it never gets old. Yeah, not like this. Mm -mm, yeah. <laughs> not like we're going to do it today. Yeah. And people have to understand that trauma happens to people every single day yes and we have to constantly be alert yes to trauma that happened in the past and yeah. in, you know bygone years but also mm -hmm. the things we're going through consistently every day because it's such a traumatic world yeah you know traumas are something that are a part of our lives unfortunately uh sin you know sin brings trauma mm. We live in a fallen system. Yeah. And because of that fallen system, the enemy is constantly trying to exploit opportunities to literally what I what I what I see is that uh, it's it's like a it's like a, a a hammer or like some sort of blunt instrument, right? Mm -hmm. If you think about if a if a hammer or or any kind of heavy thing hits someone. Yeah. Right. Right. Or or a person's in a car accident. Right. Mm hmm. It, there's the initial accident, but then there are the after effects mm -hmm. of the accident. Yeah. And they'll tell you sometimes if you get in a car accident, your your endorphins are going, your adrenaline's pumping. It's called fight or flight. Mm hmm. So what happens is sometimes you don't even know the damage that has been done. Yeah, you don't even realize. You don't even realize how hurt it you are until sometimes days later. Mm -hmm. Well, the enemy is the master of trauma. Yes. And what he loves to do is to shock our souls, Ooh. shock our systems, yeah. so that there will be lasting effects, lasting mm -hmm. damage. If I can't... See, the devil is really diabolical. Right. He's really wicked. And so his thing is, if I can't kill them now, right? if, if I can't do what I want to do in their lives, I want to create enough... Uh, havoc in their soul. Yes. Enough residue in their mind. Yes. To keep them from fulfilling their divine purpose. Well, think the about it. If there's a na if there's a power surge on a power system, what happens? Everything in your house shuts down. That's right. That's what happens to our system. That's when right. When a negative power surge via a trauma yeah. hammers us, yeah. then we shut down. Yeah. And we begin to, all of our systems go out. That's right. And, and, the, and the devil is a master at creating storms. I mean, look at what happened in the book <laughs> of Job. I mean, he created such storms, right? He created yeah. a storm of enemies coming to kill all of his yeah. servants, enemies coming to steal all of his wealth, all yep. of his herds and flocks. Yep. Um, a, he created a whirlwind to knock down the house where all his children were yeah. to Kill them all, That's and right. then he created a storm of sickness on Job's body. Yeah. He's a master storm creator. He is. He is. You know, as you're talking, one of the things I'm thinking about is when you talk about diseases or you talk about viruses. You know, uh, th there's been so many things going on with disease and viruses and all this kind of stuff. Yeah. But one of the things that uh, when I begin to study this out a little bit, God gave me a revelation. Okay. Uh, when you understand a virus, right, a viral cell, it's not really alive. It's uh, not in the sense that your human cells are alive. Okay. It's, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's definitely active, but it's not, it's not alive like your body. Okay. So what it has to do is it has to exploit your cells. Oh, it, so is it feeding on the other cells? This is how what happens. Okay. The antigen comes into the body. Okay. This, this is how these viruses work. They dis they destroy the cell by robbing it of its protein. Okay. And using the RNA in the cell to reproduce itself. Ah, it's using the cell's own power it's, of reproduction to reproduce a negative virus. To reproduce a negative virus okay. that ultimately begins to destroy the body. So what the body does is when the body... Uh, uh, sees these these antigens or these viral agents coming into the body. Yeah, it releases what are known as uh, cytokines, and cytokines are basically um, 
you know, a part of your immunity, and they're there to attack anything that shouldn't belong. Mm -hmm. But in their overreaction to not being able to handle the the strength of that viral cell, yeah. they end up destroying the body. Mm. Now, why? So why it am attacks I, its own body. It does. Why am I bringing this up, though? Okay. When when we experience trauma, when it comes into our life, yeah, right, yeah, that trauma, that spirit of trauma, is actually seeking to reproduce itself, ah, right, and yes. to operate through us to traumatize others, other people, right, yeah. So here's what happens: the body is trying to 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 really deal with the trauma. You know, maybe a person uh, was abused, or maybe yeah. someone was molested, yeah. right. Uh, this was not supposed to happen. It was not something that was a part of of of, of God's plan for their lives right. or, or whatever. But what happens is that now this person begins to react to the traumatizing experience, mm -hmm. and in the the wrong reaction or the or the overreaction to the trauma, it brings devastation right. to that person. Right. And ultimately, in the devastation it begets more and more trauma. Because yeah. when somebody is devastated like that, yeah. then they begin to have other people who are loyal and and have soul ties and friendships with that yes. person yes. get on board. Like, oh my gosh, I can't believe this happened to you. And then That's they right. get traumatized because That's their loved one got traumatized. That's right. And then it goes on and on and it reproduces. Absolutely. And then pretty soon you have a whole bunch of people not only traumatized, but then yeah. now they're offended, they're offended at the person that originally yeah. traumatized their friend. Absolutely. They get bitter about it. Yes. And it becomes this big swirl where everyone is getting wounded now. Absolutely. You have a story about that. Yeah. You're yeah, I wanted to tell that story. Yeah, tell that story. So so my wife, uh, years ago, uh, went through a traumatic experience. Mm -hmm. uh, she was notified of just something very devastating happening to a loved one. Mm -hmm. And because this loved one was so close to her, when she heard about the devastation, she herself was traumatized. Right. And I think it's important for us to establish this, that when, when there is a soul tie, Trauma can become transferable. Right. Trauma can transfer, yes. even if it didn't happen to you. Right. It becomes your trauma. It's your trauma. You own it mm -hmm. because the bridge of that connection becomes a conduit through which that trauma enters your life. It's a soul tie. So it's souls soul tie. experience what other souls are experiencing. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Okay. And so because she was tethered to this situation the way yeah. she was, mm -hmm. she was traumatized. Right. And one day she's cooking in the kitchen and uh, she's frying something. And, and the pan splash and and hot oil gets all over her hand. Ooh, okay. Uh, this was at least a second degree burn, at Whoa, least. okay. Uh, she had the, her hand under the water for hours. It didn't do anything. She's screaming in pain. My wife has given birth to five children. I was there for all five. <laughs> okay, come on. Uh, and some of them were natural births. And wow. I've never seen my wife in this much pain in wow. my life that I saw with that hand situation. And she's crying, and, and, and so we finally, you know, take her to the hospital and everything. And, uh, you know, they give her medicine, and progressively it becomes worse and worse and worse. Have you ever seen uh, barbecue chicken? Yeah. How it bubbles and it's black mm -hmm, and crispy? Mm -hmm. That's how her, her hand wow. was. Skin is flaking off oh, the hand. Oh, my gosh. Literally flaking off the hand. And eventually it's subdermal exposure. So, uh, you know, my wife, who is who is of African descent, yep. uh, uh, hand looks like yours, my hand. right? I mean, mm -hmm. and, and literally uh, it's not healing. So I call oh. my sister. I say, what's, you know, what's going on? She looks at the pictures I send. She says, this is not. This is not looking good. It's not healing. And she's like a nurse. Supposed. Your sister's. She's a, a doctor. A doctor. Okay. Yeah. She says this is not looking good. Right. And I said, okay. And so I begin to pray about this, and the Lord speaks to me, and He says, Kenan, you need to address the spirit of trauma. Come on. And I said, okay. Because so trauma I, is a spirit. Yes. It's a tormenting spirit. It's a tormenting spirit. Yes. So I go to my wife and say, listen, God told me to tell you that there's a spirit of trauma that entered into you Whoa. when you heard the news of the devastation. And that trauma also manifested when you were burned. And now the, that trauma, that spirit of trauma is inhibiting the healing Whoa. from taking place. 
And so I took my wife through a prayer of of, of healing and deliverance oh. from the traumatic experience and the trauma of the burn. Yeah. And I cast the spirit of trauma out of her hand. Oh. And when I did that, within days, her hand began to regenerate and heal. Wow. Now you can't even tell she was burned there. See, this is a big deal. Yeah. Uh, I have seen more miracles happen yeah. in people's physical bodies, yes. their finances, their relationships. Yeah. When I first dealt with the trauma they've been through yeah because everybody's been through so much trauma and yeah. there's so many even stories in the bible yeah. about how trauma gets people sick and also prevents people from getting a miracle i mean you were talking about john 5 when we were in the green room yeah john 5 is one of my favorite yeah. passages of scripture let's so, talk about that uh to paraphrase jesus comes to the pool of bethesda yeah. mm -hmm. there are thousands of people that i've actually been to that pool as i'm sure you probably I have, have, in, I have. In, in israel mm -hmm. it's a huge place yeah and there were thousands of people gathered jesus comes to a man who had been there for 38 years and he, he asked the man a question he says will you be made whole yeah now i want you to notice look at the man's response his response is, I don't have a man. That's the first thing he says. I have no man that will help me get into the pool. Mm -hmm. And every time I try to get into the pool, somebody gets in front of me. So and now this has been going on for 38 years. 38 years. So he's been traumatized. He's traumatized, right? Not mm -hmm. only is he traumatized, he's offended, right? Yeah, he's offended. And he also has a victim mentality. Yes. Because he's, he's looking at what people have done to him. Right. And the pain and the trauma and the offense have kept him as a prisoner. Yes. At the pool. Yeah. Totally, totally bedridden and totally uh, incapacitated. Right. And Jesus says something to him. He says, rise. Right. Yeah. Actually, the word rise there, it's, it's a, a Greek word. It literally means to awake from slumber. Right. And you said walk means also to take your life back. To take your life back. He says rise, that means to come out of the sleep of death, come yep. out of your state of slumber, yep. take, take up, up your, your mat bed, and take responsibility and walk, which that word walk literally means to take. make, uh, 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 do use of opportunities and to take responsibility for your life. In other words, to take your life back. Yeah, here's That's the thing, it right? We, it, to take your life back. Yes. You got to think about it. I mean, he did say those things. He said, I have nobody to, you know, to put me in the pool when the water's, is, water's yeah. stirred. So he's been abandoned. But he also sounds offended because yes. he's saying, wow, my family wasn't even here for me. Yes. And then he goes, uh, when the water is stirred, everybody here, all the other sick people cut in line in front of me. Yeah. So he's being traumatized by yes. that, but also offended. Wow, they yes. all cut in front of me. I've been here the longest. They should let me go yes. first. But then Jesus is saying, Arise, take your life back, meaning stop letting this trauma yep. and this offense yes. hold your life back. Yes. It's kept you here sick for 38 years. Yes, yes, yes. Wow. And I don't think people realize that when we talk about trauma, your trauma can arrest your breakthrough. Right. It can hold your miracle under arrest. Yes. And this man had an arrested manifestation of healing because of the trauma that was in his life. Now, we know this if you go further down in the story. Jesus finds him and he says, listen, go and sin no more, lest something worse comes on you. Right. So we see that his soul condition, his, his, his emotions, his mind, mm -hmm. become the precipitating factor for the for the sickness in his life right. for, for the for the um, you know his inability to walk his yeah. mental state mm -hmm. his his physical bondage all of that is caused by trauma and offense. sin yep. and offense in his life well think about it it says that he yeah. had an infirmity for 38 years that word infirmity there means weakness and infirmity of the body and of the soul that's right it's astaneo so yeah. it means that it was a soul issue it was definitely his a soul, soul issue. was trauma yes. his soul was offended that's right and it kept him sick for that long that's right uh, i mean you told me a story about doing a healing school <laughs> oh, and you were trying to administrate <laughs> miracles and it wasn't going to happen until God said to me, he said, you're not dealing with the right thing. He said, I want you to deal with trauma. I want you to deal with offense. Uh -huh. I want you to deal with all that kind of stuff, right. and bitterness. Yep. And so I open up the, the altar yeah. for that, and about 200 or so people come down. Yeah. One of the ladies comes in front, and she says, I have been in chronic pain for 15 or 20 years. Whoa. Every single night not being able to sleep on all kind of medication. Right. And the pain still won't go away. And she says, because I had a hatred and a bitterness of my younger sister and my parents. Wow. Because my parents favored her over me. 
Right. And she has this thing in her oh soul for years, and it becomes the precipitating power that is creating uh, the avenue for pain in her body. Yeah. And so uh, she says when we, and I took them through a prayer of deliverance and renouncing and all this stuff. And when I did that, she says the pain literally, I forgave Come my on. father, the pain lifted. Yeah. Had another lady there and she says, um, I've been going through a nasty divorce and I, I hated my husband to the point where she'd be in the kitchen and she's <laughs> plotting his murder. Oh. While she's watching dishes. She's oh. saying, she's imagining how she's going to kill Whoa. him. Right? Yeah. And and her and her body is racked with rheumatoid. Her hands are balled up like oh, this. Oh man. Even though she's not that old, right? Oh my gosh. And she, she you know, she's she's in excruciating pain. She's on all kind of uh, steroids and medication. And uh, we take her through this prayer. Of forgiveness, releasing the trauma of the abuse in the marriage, right. the infidelity, all these things that she had been going through, and to release that and to forgive. And all of a sudden, the, there's a release from the rheumatoid. Wow. When she goes to the doctor, they can't find it in her system. They're not, even when they do blood tests, they can't oh, find it. It literally the trace cleaned of the her blood. The blood was cleansed of the trauma Come on. that was creating. Uh, the the environment for rheumatoid arthritis. We have to press through yeah. our offense and our trauma. Yeah. Everybody's been trauma. Look, we understand that. People go through car accidents, yeah. divorces, they lose yeah. their children, they lose their businesses. Yeah. I mean, everyone has suffered massive trauma. You know, yeah. The pandemic, yeah. um, everything that's been happening in the world. Yeah. Okay, so everyone's doing it. But we have to press through. We got to be right. like what Jesus said to the man at the pool. Rise, pick up your mat, and walk, meaning yeah. walk, take your life back. Yeah. We've got to take our life back by not letting those things those offenses mm. and those traumas hold us back. Look at the woman with the issue of blood. Mm. She was traumatized. 12 years, it said. Mm. She went to all the doctors. She spent all she had. Mm. She didn't grow, uh, get better, but she grew worse. She mm. suffered under yeah. the hands of the doctors. It says all those traumas. She reaches out to Jesus. Yeah. Here's the thing. She didn't stay. She was she was a social outcast. She's That's right. bleeding. That's right. She's considered unclean. That's right. And she's gone all through this trauma. Does she stay home? Does she stay on her couch and yeah. whine and moan about it? And I'm not making fun of anybody. Right. But I'm just saying, no, she pressed through the crowd. That's right. She fought her way to mm -hmm. Jesus. She did what Jesus told the man at the pool. Rise, yeah. pick up your mat, and walk. Take That's your right. life back. Don't let this trauma, That's don't right. let this stuff hold you back. Yeah. She fought to get to Jesus, and she got healed. Yeah. Uh, you know, Katie, trauma is a destiny thief. Yes. Whoa. It's a destiny thief. Yeah. Whoa. And and the Bible tells us that when a thief is caught, it has uh, the thief has to uh, return that which he stole sevenfold. Come on. That's which, right. Which is that sevenfold is a complete restoration. Right. It's healing. It's a financial breakthrough. It's Everything. your family, your marriage. Everything. Yeah. So once we arrest trauma. Yes. It has to release Come on. the things that it's held captive. Yes. People's callings, people's assignments, Whoa. people's Come on. people's money, people's relationships. Right. You understand? Can you can you like speak into the camera right yeah. now and, yeah. and command everyone's trauma to be arrested. Have them arrested yeah. so they can get their dreams and their and their yeah, marriages yeah, back. Yeah. yeah. Right now in Jesus Thank name, Jesus. I just speak over every soul, mm. every soul, every person Shoot. watching me in the name of Jesus, Ooh. and I declare that there is an arrest warrant from mm. the courts of heaven against the spirit of trauma oh, in your life, Ooh. and right now I want you to come into agreement with mm. the decree of God. The Bible says he sent his word, Psalm 107, and he healed them and delivered them from their destruction. Mm. So right now I declare in Jesus' name that the, wor the rhema word of God is going into your soul right now. Mm. Now wow. and is arresting the spirit of trauma. And I just want you to declare this say in Jesus' name. Jesus name. I declare. I declare. I come into agreement I with the word of God. Agreement with the word of God. And right now. And right now. Trauma. Trauma. In my soul. In my soul. In my body. In my body. In any area of my life. In any area of my life. Is under arrest. Is under arrest. And I demand. And I demand. According to the word of God. According to the word of God. A release. A release. Of everything. Of everything. That has been held in captivity. That has been in held in captivity. In my life. In my life. And in the lives of my family and members. And in the lives of my family members. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Whoa. Yeah. I felt that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I felt that. Yeah. Trauma's insidious. Yeah. You know, uh, trauma 
when it happens to us, yeah. it makes us get bitter, and then we begin to attack people. Come on. We see that happening with husbands and wives. Yeah. You know, they get traumatized through an mm -hmm. event, and then they start turning on each other. That's right. Even though the other person isn't at fault. That's right. You know, we see that between family members. We see that between political parties. We yeah. see that out, you know, in the world. Yeah. And it's in the Bible. I mean, yeah. if you look at the story in Ziglag, what happened? Uh, <laughs> David and his men live at Ziglag because mm. they've been out. They were hiding from Saul, King Saul. So they're already traumatized because mm. they're on the run. Okay. They go out raiding one day. Mm. When they come back, the Amalekites have come. Mm. And they have taken the women and the children. Yeah. They have taken all their possessions. And yeah. they've even burned Ziglag yeah. Yeah. to the ground. And it says yeah. the men wept and wept, right? Mm -hmm. So we know, you know, men don't cry like women do. Mm -hmm. So we know they are completely traumatized. Yeah. Now, this is how bad the trauma was. The Bible says this. It says, and David, this is in verse 6. Yeah. This is in uh, 1 Samuel 30. It says, and David was greatly distressed for the men spoke of stoning him. Because, and it tells us why, yeah. the souls of them were all bitterly grieved, yeah. each man for his son and his daughter. Yeah. So see, they were so traumatized yeah. that they became so bitter yeah. about the trauma <laughs> Come on. that they were going to stone David. That's right. Now, the thing is, it doesn't say that it was David's fault that this happened. Yeah. Come on. Okay? Yeah. I mean, but they were probably, this is how it sounds when people get traumatized mm -hmm. and they begin to have their soul get bitter. They start saying things that aren't true. They they probably were saying stuff like, well, if David hadn't been running from Saul in rebellion, right, right. you know, we wouldn't be here in the first place. We'd That's be right. back in Israel where it's safe. That's or right. if is you know, if David hadn't taken us out raiding today yep. mm -hmm. and we were home when the yep. Amalekites came, yep. this would have never happened. Exactly. We start doing that. Yep. Out of our trauma we start getting so bitter yes. that we start saying things that aren't true and we start doing this. We start throwing stones at each other. That's right. And stoning even people that aren't at fault and people that we love. They yeah. all admire David. Yeah. So yeah. this happens so much. We we look when trauma is in our life, yeah. we are constantly looking for someone to blame yeah. for our pain. Yeah. Right? We're looking for a target Man. Yes. for the pain. Whoa. And and we see this with, with David's men. These were men that knew his character. These were men who trusted him. These men under normal situations would die for David. Mm -hmm. Would easily give their lives. But when trauma comes in, mm -hmm. when bitterness comes in, so yep. the person they love yes. becomes the person they hate. Yes. And wow. this is this is so and a stone. And, and this yeah. is so important. Yeah. Uh, because we see this in churches, we see this in nations. We yes. see uh, uh, Jesus talks about brother will rise up against brother, mm -hmm. right? And he says because the love of many, he says I'm sorry because iniquity will abound, right? Right. The love of many will wax cold. Yeah. And offenses will be there. These are all manifestations of sin, of brokenness, of trauma, and. Uh, we, we really have to be mindful of this because even in our, our country, right, when, yep. when our soul, the soul of a nation can be wounded, the yes. soul of a nation can be traumatized, yep. and we begin to bite and devour one another. We begin to look at, wow. you know what, well, it I, I, I'm it's, coming, it's your fault. You said <sighs> it, and, and you did this, and, it, and we begin to turn uh, our weapons toward one another. Yes. God spoke to me a word, something profound. He says, Kenan, he says, he just talks about this. This is Keenan. More people have been killed on accident yeah. than have been killed on purpose. Because of trauma. Just in, in, So if you think about this, right? Now, think about how uh, uh, we have believers in churches who are actually killing each other by what we would call friendly fire. In other words, I am releasing things out of my pain and what I'm releasing is ricocheting all over the place, is hitting people who are not even the the the, the culprits right. of the pain. Yeah. You know, and, and I, I think about when you look at these inner cities, for example, and a drive by shooting, it's always the person who is innocent that gets that killed. ends up getting killed. Yeah. Somebody's grandmother, somebody's little little niece or nephew. It's never the person because that's what happens when we're traumatized. Yes, we're, one we're, gang yeah. member came and shot another gang member. That's right. That gang member is now so traumatized and that's so right. filled with bitterness and revenge. That's right. That they go out to do a drive-by shooting against the person that afflicted them, yep. and then an innocent person gets killed every time. 
Yes. Every time. And it all started because someone sinned and then trauma was a result of it. That's right. Mm. And so we, we see this even in our interactions daily with believers. You know, when I think about um, uh, things that I've been through, yeah. you know, situations I've walked through, I've walked through many situations. Yeah. And there came a point, and I shared this with you offset, off camera, about God delivering me from the spirit of victimhood. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I didn't know it, uh, Sister Katie, but I was constantly holding others hostage to my pain. Yeah. That they often didn't know anything about. Yeah. Wow. How wow. do you hold someone responsible for something not only that they didn't do, yeah. But they don't even know about it because they weren't there. Right. Right. Uh -huh. And a lot of times this is done subconsciously. You know, uh, we it's called debt collecting. We want to hold someone else responsible. We think if somebody will will admit they did something, yeah, come it on. will make the pain in our soul feel better. <laughs> you know, there's a story about that relates to all come we've on. been talking about in um, 2 Samuel 2. Yeah. And it's a story where Joab is the leader of the Israelite army under David. Yeah. And Abner is the leader or the general of the army under Saul. Yeah. Okay. And what happens is, is they the two men bring their mighty men together one day and they say, okay, let's do this. Let's have all of our men do hand-to-hand -hand fighting and that will solve the war we're having right now. <laughs> and it says that they all got up and they all stabbed each other in the belly and all of them fell dead. Wow. And then what happened was is that Abner uh, started <laughs> taking off and Joab's brother... Ashiel began to chase him. Now they said that Ashiel was like fast as a deer. Yeah. So he's chasing Abner, he's chasing Abner, and Abner is looking back and saying, stop chasing me because if I have to kill you, um, you know, your brother Joab will never forgive me, but he won't stop. And he keeps on chasing him. And finally Abner, remember he's the general for Saul, takes his spear and he thrusts it backwards and it goes through Ashiel and kills him. Now Joab and his, the rest of his troops are now fiercely chasing yeah. Abner. And he gets him up to, he traps on on the top of this hill and Abner calls down and this is what he says to Joab. He says, my brother, mm. must the sword devour forever? Don't you realize that this will end in bitterness? Mm. How long before you order your men to stop pursuing their fellow Israelites? Wow. And so actually um, Joab calls, calls it off, but he doesn't forget because the trauma of his brother being yeah. murdered grows into just what Abner said. It's gonna end in bitterness. Yeah. And in the very next chapter, um, David makes peace with Abner. And when Joab finds out that he made peace with the man that killed his brother, he's incensed. Yeah. He secretly calls Abner saying, David wants to talk to you. Abner shows up and he kills Abner yeah. out of bitter revenge. Yep. But that came from the trauma. The trauma. Yeah, and it's very interesting. The last point is it says when David heard about it, he says, My, me and the kingdom are innocent before the Lord yeah. of this murder. It says, may this blood fall on the head of Joab. And it says, and may Joab ne family never be without someone who has a running sore, a leprosy, who leans on a crutch, falls by the sword, or who lacks food. Mm. Basically, a curse came upon. Mm -hmm. Wow. A curse of sickness, a curse of leprosy, yep. a curse of death by falling by the sword, a curse of lack yeah. came upon uh, Joab's family yeah. because he let the trauma drive yeah. him to bitter revenge. Yep, absolutely. You know, um, I'm thinking of a story in uh, in Acts 14. Yeah. Uh, this is so interesting because I was studying it, kind of like looking at some of the words uh, used, but it talks about how Paul is preaching, right? He is, he's engaged in his assignment. He's, he's preaching the gospel. They go to Iconium and he's preaching, preaching, preaching. And his ministry is, is successful. People get born again, they get saved. And the, the Jews who are jealous of Paul, the religious leaders and, and those sorts, they begin to, what the Bible says in verse two, it says, but the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles and made their minds evil affected Whoa. against the brethren. Whoa. Right? He, they stirred up Whoa. the Gentiles, and yeah. they made their minds... Which is part of their soul. Their souls evil affected. And so I began to look at this word evil affected, and it literally means to embitter. Oh, man. Oh. 
They they Man. literally released bitterness into oh, them. Man. And this becomes the catalyst for a tremendous level of persecution that Paul experiences. Mm. Because what we said at the beginning of this broadcast is that uh, trauma begets trauma. It does. Right? So what happens in, in the bitterness, now this bitterness is released, and now Paul is going and he's preaching, and now they're, they're, they're rallying more uh, antagonizers against him. Oh man! And ultimately, we see in in, in this is happening now. Yeah, all it over is. the world. It is. It is. And ultimately, we begin to see uh, that Paul is devastated. Some even believe that you know, there's a story where he's stoned, and and he that's where he begins to. Uh, some scholars believe have his experience that he talks about in Second Corinthians, the twelfth yeah. chapter. Yeah. You know, he's talking about I went to heaven. Yeah, because they killed you. Yeah. You know, but <laughs> but but the idea is 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 that is that the trauma begets trauma. That we can, whether we know it or not, Sister Katie, we can stir. Yeah. Oh. We can stir. Man. Bitterness. Oh. In someone else's soul. Oh, man. And it's very, very dangerous. When we allow ourselves to be traumatized and we don't catch ourselves. That's right. And then we it multiplies by us getting bitter. Yeah. We begin, we become potsters. That's right. We do. And we stir up everyone around us. Yeah. Rally around me. I've been hurt. And people want to be loyal. So they go, yes, you've been hurt. We'll rally around you. Yeah. And then this person did it. And now this and this. And they're doing this and this. And then they, they release the bitterness against the person who might have sinned against them or yeah. might have had a perceived, it might be a perceived sin it could be perceived, against yeah. them. And the people then also around them get bitter and then everyone is stirred up and the whole situation starts getting explosive and you start seeing, you know, three members of the family over here saying one thing and two over here saying another and they're battling and then yeah. it grows, yeah. you know, and, and you know, this happens in businesses. It happens in between staff members. Yeah. It happens at churches. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's trauma and bitterness yeah. is a pot store. It is. It is. It's a terrible thing. And the scripture says that, uh, that lest there be a, a root of bitterness mm -hmm. in you. And then it says this, whereby many are defiled. defiled. Many are defiled. Mm -hmm. You know, when we become septic, when we become toxic, uh, in our emotions, you know, I I remember uh, I was talking to Dr. Don Colbert. I don't know if you yep, know Dr. who that Don is. Yeah, Dr. Don Colbert. Yep. And he wrote a book called Toxic Emotions. And we're back in the green room on the broadcast, and we're talking. And he says, he says, he says, toxic emotions destroy the nervous system and the immune system. Wow. He begins to explain how it happens. Wow. When when our adrenal glands are open too long. It releases adrenaline, it increases your blood sugar, and now your your muscle tissue, your organs, everything begins to become damaged, right? Wow. So now because of what you have internalized, it becomes self-destructive. Oh, and man. now my that self-destruction is is being released to others. Wow. Yeah. Well, that's why you see that curse that David said, yeah. you know, when when Joab killed yeah. Abner yeah. out of being traumatized first yeah. by the murder of his brother, the yeah. death of his brother, and then becoming bitter about it, yeah. and then taking out that bitter revenge by killing Abner. I mean, the curse is released. Okay, you're going to have running sores, may Joab's family have running sores, leprosy, lean on a crutch, fall by the sword, lack food. Lord, have Part of that is just the, in the natural, the fact that, you know, this bitterness that runs in Joab's family now is going to manifest in sickness and disease absolutely, and lack. Absolutely, absolutely. It, it's so true. I, I can't tell you how, I mean, I, I have stories that yeah. are all day long, but I've seen many people get out of wheelchairs yeah. when I just, you know, had them walk through repenting of bitterness and, and walking through getting healed of trauma. Yeah. And so people, you know, it says that they'll lean on the crutch. That's yeah. one of the curses. Yeah. And then they, they are healed. They come out of the chair, they throw the crutch away, they, yeah. the pain goes. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've seen thousands, thousands. Yeah, same with me. And I think that uh, when we when we understand this um, and we, we begin to develop an immunity yeah. against the spirit of trauma. Right. Even when we sense it, Mm -hmm. Even when we sense the encroachment of that spirit. Mm -hmm. Because remember, we said this before, demons don't have any legal jurisdiction in the earth 
without the cooperation of human beings. Right. So they're constantly trying to get in. Mm. Because, and so, yeah. Because if they can't get in, they can't get out. They want to get in so that they can get out, right? Mm. So so whether it is, you know, I'm, I'm racially profiled and, and, and I'm reminded of all the pain of my mm-hmm. ancestors and my family members and, and, and now that thing gets into me, I internalize it and, and, and now I begin to become an orifice of vitriol and division and strife yes. and, and now I'm angry and now I want others to pay whether they were involved in it or not. I, I, you gotta pay for it and you gotta pay yeah. and now I become a collector. Yeah. Right. I become a debt collector. You know, it's col- like, yeah, it's somebody's going to admit Somebody that they're at fault pay. because I'm in pain and I need someone to just say, okay, it was me. I did it. Yeah. I'll never forget one time. I'll, 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 and I'll let you take it. No. But I'll, I'll, I'll never forget one time I was going through a very devastating situation. And it had to do with I was being falsely accused. I was being lied on, which I always hated before I was born again. You know, that's one thing that would make me fight you. If you lied on me, we would have to go right. fisticuffs over it. I, but, I, I but relate. What happened was I was going through the situation, and I was I was literally being lied on, talked about, taken advantage of, and I was so hurt and so wounded. And I didn't realize, even as a born-again believer, my prayers, whether I spoke them or not, became wanting to make the people pay. Mm. They're going to pay for what they've done to me. They, oh, they, yeah. They're going to realize they came against the man of God and all this other stuff, right? Right. And the Lord speaks to me. And uh, he says to me, he says, Kenan, he says, notice what I said in my word. He said in, uh, it was Romans chapter 12, verse 19. He says, vengeance belongs to me. Then he says, I will repay. That word repay literally means to compensate for pain, suffering, or injury. Come on. And he says, I will repay. And I and I said, okay, Lord. He says, the reason why I will repay, he says, is because those who have offended you, your enemies who have wounded you, they don't have the budget to pay you back. Wow. <laughs> no. Wow. He says, everything that you're going to get out of whatever you're going through has to come directly from me. Wow. And when we realize that the people that have hurt us, abused us, wounded us, do not have the capacity to pay us back, wow. that our only restoration and repayment comes from God, then we can begin to walk in peace. We can release those people and we can receive what God has for us. Oh my God. Yeah. My guest today is Dr. Kenan Bridges, and you know you can watch my content and his content on our new app on Faith Now. Go to your app store on Faith Now, download the app, and you'll see it says Katie TV. We have our own channel now on the Faith Now app, and you can watch 24 and 7 content from myself, from Dr. Keenan, and from other very powerful men and women of God. You can also go on to My Faith TV and sign up to receive access by using the keyword Katie. Let's just take a 30 second promo to look at this. We'll be right back. We're going to move into a healing activation. I was just looking um, at a verse that we're going to talk about right now, but please get the app. Uh, if you are tired of commercials and other things like that, just go get Faith Now so you can watch TV and you can watch all the great content on there. Amen. So, yeah. you know, we were talking about Hebrews 12, about the, you know, don't let a bitter root come because it yeah. will trouble, vex, and defile many. That's right. The word trouble there actually means to be, or vex there means to be troubled by demons. That's right. So when we come into agreement with trauma, yep. instead of going, whoa, I, I, you know, I'm sensing I'm traumatized. Yeah. I, I, I need to 
you know, release the Holy Spirit right now because I've been, yeah. you know, hit by something. Yeah. Somebody's talking on me. Yeah. Uh, my spouse just exploded on me. Yeah. Um, I got, you know, gossiped on uh, yeah. and on trolled on yeah. my Facebook page or yeah. whatever. You know, somebody at work dissed yeah. me, you know, and you have to recognize those moments yeah. and you have to say, Holy Spirit, come in and heal me because the Bible says we'll receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon us. That's right. So we all have the third person of the Trinity, Holy Spirit living in us, yeah. but he didn't come alone. Right. He brought power with him. That's right. When he came in. And yeah. that word power there is the Greek word dunamis. Yeah. Dunamis. And it means many things. It, it means power to perform a miracle. It means um, uh, power and influence that comes with riches and wealth. But it yeah. also means this excellence of soul. That's right. So it says you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Dunamis power. Yeah. Meaning you have power, every believer, to be excellent of soul. That's right. We've got to learn to recognize these things. Yeah. We've got to learn that when we're going through a trauma, yeah. before it gets to the point where it becomes we're bitter about it, mm -hmm. that we attack it. Yeah. Because we have weapons. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. That's right. They're powerful for the overthrowing yeah. of these strongholds of trauma and woundedness yeah. in our soul. That's right. But we got to activate into it. The Bible talks about in Ephesians 3.20, it says that, um, that God will do exceedingly above and beyond all that you could ever ask or imagine or dream or yeah. think about. That's what it says in the Amplified. Yeah. But it happens under a condition. It says it happens according to the power. The dunamis. Dunamis. That's at work in you. We have to put that power to work. We got mm. it for free. It's mm. a free gift of God's grace. Yeah. But now we have to work it. Yeah. So when we feel that trauma coming upon us, yeah. when we feel that attack, right away instead of letting it fester yep. and cause us to get bitter and offended yeah. we have to go whoa that took me off guard mm -hmm. wow that hit me like a hammer like you said yep. sent a shock wave through my system that's right but i've got the holy spirit that's right and dunamis power yeah. and so holy spirit right now yeah come on you know come into my soul release that dunamis yeah. power make me what dunamis means mm. Excellent soul. Yeah. And if we do what you said, you said arrest that trauma. That's right. That's how we arrest it. Yeah. We arrest it with supernatural weapons, the Holy Ghost. That's right. And tra and, and doing his power yeah. onto that trauma. And then yeah. pretty soon as you just begin to decree that, yeah. put your hand on your heart and release it, yeah. you're gonna start to feel a shift That's right. happen in your soul. Yeah. And you have to do that before you get bitter. That's right. <laughs> That's good. Now, let's say you don't and you do get better, then repent yeah. of that bitterness. Because it's not about, That's right. you know, oh, that person doesn't deserve me to yep. repent. They hurt me. It's not about them. It's about you. Do you want yeah. the curses that, that came upon Joab's family line? It said that they'd all, in his family, for having bitter revenge from being traumatized by the death of his brother, that he uh, was going to always have leprosy in the family, somebody with a running sore, he was going to have somebody on a crutch, yeah. somebody with a lack of Come food, on. somebody who's killed by the sword. You don't want any of that. Yeah. Sickness, disease, financial lack, anything coming upon you because you let a trauma make you be bitter. So yeah. you have to repent of that bitterness. Yeah. And you have to release the Holy Spirit and dunamis. Yeah. yeah, you know, this is this is amazing because when we when we think about this whole concept of bitterness, I was just looking at something here. Yeah. And and it, it is the antithesis of what Jesus told us in John four. Mm. He said that he says that if you believe on me, he says it, it will be a spring of water. Come on. Coming up out of you. Then he says, Whoa. whoever believes on me out of his innermost being, that's the spirit, that's the soul, yep. out of the innermost being will, will become a well, a spring of living that's water. That's dunamis power. That's the dunamis power of God. It is. Flowing out of us. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? And so, so the enemy wants to pollute the well spring. Oh, come on. He wants to cause contamination in the well so that what's coming out of us is something unclean, something that cannot be be, be drank by the nations. Yep. God wants pure water to flow out of us. Oh yeah. So that when we are uh, when we are interacting with people, when we're praying for people, when we're laying hands, when we're mm. doing whatever God's called us to do, there's no defilement right. uh, attached to what 
uh, of what we're releasing in right. that moment. Yeah. There's two springs, and it talks about that with our mouth. That's right. Right? Now, quote the scripture, it, where it has the two springs. Is, is it a pure spring, or is it a salty spring? That's right. That's James chapter, uh, I believe, James chapter 3. Mm -hmm. It talks about uh, the mouth, you know, and we can't drink uh, bitter water and clean out of the same well. Right, it says the tongue is a fire. That's right. The tongue is a world of wickedness yep. set amongst our members, yep. contaminating and depraving the whole body. That's right. And setting on fire the wheel of birth, the cycle of man's nature, being, excel yep. being itself ignited yep. by hell. That's right. We're actually letting this hell control yep. our mouth yep. when we allow trauma and bitterness to come upon us. I yep. mean, you know, it says, it says, out of the same mouth comes forth blessing and cursing. There's that right. dual stream you're talking yep. about. Mm -hmm. These things, my brethren, ought not to be. Verse yep. 11, does a fountain send forth simultaneously from the same opening fresh water and bitter. That's right. Yeah. It's like those springs of living water that live in us, that's the Holy Spirit, that's doing us power, but we mm. you can do exactly what you said. Yeah. We can pollute that spring yeah. by having the fresh water be polluted by the bitter. That's when we right. open our mouth and we start vocalizing, oh, this and this happened, and now that person, yeah. I can't believe what they did to me. Yeah. I'm, I'm offended, I'm angry yeah. at them, I haven't forgiven. And that's going to cause bitter. And it says that it pollutes, quote, the whole body. That's right. You know, the story in Exodus chapter 15. Yeah. Here they are. This is amazing. They've come out. They've seen God deliver them out of the Red Sea. Yeah. Right? Miriam is releasing a prophetic song of the Lord. They're excited. Everybody's rejoicing. Yeah. Pharaoh was drowned in the sea. And their next stop is they go to a place called Mira. And Which means bitter. Bitterness. It, goes, yep. it means bitter or bitterness. Yep. So they go to this place called Mira, and and when they go Mar, I'm sorry, when they go to the the uh, the, the the waters of Mar, and they're 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 literally unable to drink the water because it's bitter. Right. And what happens? And they're is, dying of thirst. And they're dying, right? And now this is this is they're being negatively affected by the bitterness. Yep. Now hear this: Moses goes before God and says, "What?" Do I, I do. do? Come on, bring it. And he tells him, he says, I want you to throw a tree <laughs> into the water. <laughs> and when you throw the tree oh, into the water, man. the bitter waters will become mm, sweet. Yes. And I believe there's some people, if I could just probably, there's some yeah, people please. watching. Come on. And you, Jesus took the tree <sighs> to heal your wounded soul. Mm. That when the work of the cross, when the work of redemption is applied to every area of your soul, every bitter thing will become sweet. You need some sweetener today. Mm. Oh, come on. And I just declare in Jesus' oh, name on. that the, the power mm. of the Holy Spirit, mm. that the power of what Jesus did on the cross, the blood of mm. Jesus literally is purifying every bitter water in your life bitter waters in your heart, in your soul, in your mind, and you are going to be able to have a fountain of purity that flows out of you. And the nations will come to that fountain yes, and, and they drink. will be healed. Mm. And this is what it said in, in Exodus 15. He says, I am the Lord who heals come on. all your diseases. Yes. I am Jehovah Rapheka. I'm your great physician. Yes. And I believe that it will follow God's instruction in this hour. It will allow the power of the Holy Spirit, the, what, what, the, what the blood of Jesus has done through come the on. cross to redeem us, not just our spirit, but our mind, our soul, to totally restore us. We will be a sweet well to this generation. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. And look, we have to do, you know, take that intentional action. It says that Moses asked God, what do I do <laughs> about these bitter waters? And the Lord said, take a, a piece of a branch, a piece of wood, and throw it into the water. Yeah. And then the bitter waters will be made sweet. And Moses did it. That's right. So when you feel yourself, look... <laughs> Right now, many of you are have yeah. been traumatized. Come on. And it's unfair what's happened to you. 
Yeah. Totally unfair. But you've let yourself become bitter about it. And now yeah. you have to take an intentional act yeah. by taking that cross and throwing it into the bitter water inside your soul through oh, your repentance. Wow. Come on. Because that's Good. what the cross is all about. It's like it gives us the ability to repent of our sin. Yeah. And then we are made clean. It says 1 John 1 9, when we confess of our sin our our sins, yeah. he is faithful to forgive us and cleanse us yeah. of all unrighteousness. Righteousness, and that includes bitterness. So look, you got to pray with me right now. Yeah, and, and and don't come to me later and say, I'm still sick. I'm still that. When you're still holding on to an offense. I have yeah. many times where I lead people through a prayer and they don't really forgive the people that they're angry at. Yeah. They hold on to it still. So come I on. need you to really do it right now. Yeah. Okay. Just pray with me. Just say, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I forgive. I forgive. Every single person. Every single person. That's ever been involved. Ever been involved. In my trauma. In my trauma. Be it Ooh. a loved one. A loved one. A husband or a wife. A husband or wife. A family member. A family member. A friend. A friend. A boss. A boss. A person I work with. A person I work a with. A pastor. A pastor. A leader. A leader. Someone at my church. Someone at my church. A governmental official. A governmental official. No matter who it was. No matter who it was. Lord, right now. Lord, right now. I forgive them. I forgive them. And I repent. And I repent. For getting bitter. For getting bitter. I want to be healed. I want to be healed. I want to have the breakthrough. I want to have the breakthrough. So I'm taking an intentional action. So I'm taking an intentional action. Like Moses did. Like Moses. When the bitter waters became sweet. When the bitter waters became sweet. He took that branch he took the branch the cross the cross threw it into the water threw it into the water I take the cross I take the cross I take the blood I take the blood Jesus shed for me Jesus shed for I me I pull it in I pull it in to my bitter soul to the bitter soul to heal these waters to heal every water to make them clean to make them clean so rivers rivers of living water of living water can flow forth flow forth into my body into my body into my mind into my mind. Into my emotions. Into my emotions. Into my business. Into my business. Into my marriage. Into my marriage. Into my family. Into my family. Into my ministry. Into my ministry. Into my finances. Into my finances. And I can see life. And I can see life. Coming into every area I need it. Coming into every area I need it. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, wow, wow Dr. Wow. Keenan. Wow, we've got like two minutes left. Yeah. How? What would you like to say as we close today? You know... I think one of the most powerful acts uh, in the universe yeah. is forgiveness. Come on. It is the most powerful act in the universe. Yes. And, and in order to forgive, in order for God to forgive, mm. someone had to die. Yes. You know, <laughs> when I've been married for many years, and I, and I realize, and that's why I, I tell couples when I... When I do counseling, they say, I want to get married. I say, all right, so. Get ready to die. Are you ready for your funeral? <laughs> because in order to walk in love, <laughs> even as Christ's sake, <laughs> even as God for Christ's sake oh, man. has forgiven us, yes. so also do we. Yes. Which Amen. means that Christ died mm -hmm. so that the Father could freely forgive us. Come on. Let me tell you something. Okay, we got one minute left. Right now. Let that thing, your right to be right, yep. your right to be vindicated, yep. lay it on the cross. Come on. Let it die. And when you let that die, you will be able to release the power of forgiveness yes. in every area of your life. Father, yes. I thank, thank you for you, it now. Jesus, right now. And I declare that your people are healed thank and you, they Lord. have excellence of soul. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen. Yes. Look, if you enjoyed today's broadcast, please look at your text to give number on the bottom of the screen. Look, we're supporting 4,000 prison ministries and, and prisons during this time mm. of epic pandemics and unrest in the country. I need your help and your support. Even $5, $10 will make a big difference. Yeah. So please text to give an offering today to help us. And also go online to katiesouza.com and get in the Healing School archives in our products. Yeah. Um, our Healing School, it's super powerful. Okay, everybody, I'm Katie Souza. Thanks, Dr. Kim, for coming again. All right, you. this is Faith Today. We'll see you on our next episode.